right, welcome back to my my channel. Uh, it's been a long time, five, six months, and uh, it's been a lot of work uh, updating my boat. Uh, and I got a new job as well. I'm working on offshore platforms in the catering business, and it's really nice. And it's uh, two weeks on and uh, two to four weeks off, and that leaves me enough time to do this sailing Tessie and making videos. I was uh, contacted by a company called Grand Sail in Norway. They are uh, selling Rolly Tasker sails in uh, Norway, and uh, they sent my videos further on to the to the leadership in uh, Rolly Tasker. And Rolly Tasker contacted me and uh, asked me if they could help out with uh, some sales. And I was intrigued, and I of course said yes. So they asked, uh, so what kind of sales do you need, Eric? And uh, I said that I don't have any downwind sail, uh, so I need a downwind sail, a Janaker. Never sailed a Janaker before, and it's easy to handle when you're alone. And as you know, my big Genoa is not very good at strong winds, so I wanted a heavy weather jib to uh, to go when uh, when the weather gets tough because this is just it's just a big bag when you reef it up in strong winds. And we had some discussion about uh, what kind of heavy weather jib I uh, I wanted, and uh, one option was to have it interchangeable with uh, with the Genoa, but it's real tough work to to get this down and get another sail up. So the best option was to, to make a cutter stay and put on a cutter, uh, heavy weather jib for, for a cutter stay. And here it is. Uh, it came with this really nice bag uh, to, to wrap it in when I'm not using it. But before we start talking about it, uh, let me tell you about the, the force stay I installed. That was one hell of a job to, to get it up there. It looks easy, it's just a wire going up, but uh, to get it uh, fastened to the boat was a real job. So with a bad eye infection, Beautiful weather. I carried straight down to Stavanger, a six hour sail to collect the parts for a new inner stay. Whoa. Every success starts off with a good foundation. Two 5mm plates got bolted into the stringer, revealing in the anchor locker. Should be sufficient. Then a couple of eye brackets got bolted onto the deck, both over and under. A suitable length of 10 mm chain was prepared and turnbuckles fitted and tightened. So from the top uh, and down, it's uh, two eyes, one here and one here. And it's a chain going all the way down to this turnbuckle. Uh, and for the other eye, that's for the sail. And that's another turnbuckle that goes uh, together with the, with the same uh, turnbuckle down here. So, so it's a nice system now and uh, it's really, really, really strong. Yes, and this is a masthead rig. That means that every stay on the boat comes up all the way to the top and I only have one set of spreaders. And that means that I can't have this cutter stay uh, the traditional way. And that's about a place in between the spreaders and the top. But with me, it's not any support of their sideways, so I'm gonna have to lift the stay almost to the top. Uh, I can't have it all the way because of there is much things going on up there, so there's not room. So we just have to have it uh, about one and a half meter from the top. I can see when I sail, uh, there is some small bend on the rig, but uh, that's just the way it's gonna be. I just have to live with it and, uh, and uh, monitor it and, and see, see how it goes with time. A smart Salden bracket for the inner stay mast mount was drilled to fit and lock inside the mast and then a security plate to be riveted to the mast profile. Now the inner stay was finally ready to be installed. Okay, so this is the new uh, cutter stay, so it's just gonna take my climbing gear on and uh, get up there. So here we are. So this bit is coming out now, this hook. Pull this bunt 
empty back. There we go, that's out. Well, this is for the halyard. That's gonna be it's coming from the top here and then going through this one and do the sail. Okay. Twist and in, yes. So this goes from the deck and all the way up to the, up to almost to the top of the mast. It's a detachable uh, forestay. That means if you, uh, if I take off this smart, this, uh, this smart pins here, I can just unscrew it. My hand shouldn't be tighter than that. And then instead of, instead of having those traditional bolts with splints in, I have this, what you call drop nose bolts. That means that you can, you can just flip out the, the end of it and then you can take it off. And then the stay is loose. And then what you can do is to take it back and all the way up on the starboard spreader, I have this uh, hook that I installed. But it's not so easy to get the wire in, inside of it. Yeah, there we go. It's fast up there. And then I can just tie it off on this deck fitting for the turnbuckle. And then I can remove the, the turnbuckle for the forestay just on the same way, like this, and it's free. Yes, so this is the jib sail and it's pretty straightforward, easy, easy going. It's uh, stuck on the deck fittings here. We have this, what you call harness or whatever it is for climbing. And then another carbine hook for climbing and uh, it's fast on the sail here. The same aft carabiner and uh, to the sheet. If the wind picks up even more, I can have this one reef in it, so let me show you how that works. Let's see. It's a pretty basic reefing procedure. Lower the sail, clip into aft and forward reefing rings, tighten up, and tie up the foot of the sail. Important is to, to get the sail up so the wind and waves can get in under it. And we are ready to go. So that's the preparations for flying the jib. Now it's time for the fun part. So just what I was planning for, a uh, good breeze, 25 knots. We put it to the test. So I'm gonna host the mainsail first now and uh, land the jib sail. And then we're gonna head offshore. Yeah. So let's head offshore. I headed out to open ocean outside Haugesund. 30 knots and heavy hitting waves give the best circumstances for testing the equipment. But the wind picked up even more. And being the first time out with the new installments, I decided to go easy and head back inshore. Okay, so that's a good test for the high wind, uh, heavy wind uh, jib from Raleigh Task here. Now we're happy with it so far. Everything's holding up, strong and good. And I think we're gonna head back to, uh, to uh, to land now. It's about 30 knots there now. It's, uh, it's cold, so I need to head inshore again. I have that bear. All right. Climbing to the bow to take down the jib sail was a new experience. There is a lot of power in an untamed sail blowing everywhere, but with sufficient training, you will eventually find an easy and safe way to do it. Sailing with a jib sail on an inner stay when the wind picks up has a lot of advantages. 
you get the center of force closer to the mast, things get more balanced, and I instantly noticed that hand steering and using the autopilot got a lot less stressful. And it's a great safety feature to know you can roll up the Genoa and deploy the heavy weather jib sail anytime you need it. Together with the mainsail, the, the extra things you need to have is, uh, of course, the sheets. A couple of extra sheets going uh, through this runner here. This I bought new for the for the big Genoa. It's a slider, and it's adjustable with this uh, with this rope. So when you when you tension get tension on the sail, it will it will slide the wagon backwards, and you can adjust it forwards. This line here. And then the sheets come to each their winch on each their side. And I'll make them fast on this tying point here. And I've also installed some uh, clam cleats, or what you call it, to, to hold the ropes. This is for the for the Genoa furlough on the starboard side. It's for the boom brake on the boom. And also on the mast for the heavy weather jib. And this is for uh, the Genaker, and this is for the uh, for the headsail, the, the Genoa up front. All right, so that's the jib sail. So we are moving on, and that's the Genaker A5 Genaker. And to be able to sail this guy, to fly it, we I needed to to get the tack of the Genaker in front of the of the foresail, but I have nothing to. To fasten it to uh, on the on the bow here, so I need. I asked uh, Selden if they could help me out with this bowsprit, and they said yes. So they actually helped me out with this uh, beast here. The Selden bowsprit package mainly consists of a three-meter aluminium tube and a ring to hold it in place. The ring was to be welded onto my existing four-stay bow fitting. The proper tube length measured, marked and cut. A deck fastening bracket got riveted onto the aft end. The other end was detached and the Genoker tack line was threaded through the tube. And lined up afterwards to one of the rooftop deck winches. So we just loosen, take it off here, and then I just push it. That's stuck. My Janager block top fitting also had snapped some weeks ago, so I cut out a suitable piece from a 10 mm stainless steel plate, reinforced it with some welding, rented a lift to have good access to the top and then bolted the whole thing to the top of the mast. Okay, so that's it. Top mount is installed. Okay, and I've installed some, a couple of mast steps here on the top. Now I can uh, stand on these when I, cl I climb up the, the top of the mast. I will clip my waist harness onto this one. So now I can stand with my waist about here so I can do service on the top of the mast. So I hope it works and I'll test it out later. And with all the installments done, it was time to have some fun again. Well offshore, in 16 to 20 knots wind, I made the Janaker sock ready on deck. Then the bowsprit pushed out forwards. Tack line clipped onto the tack, halyard clipped onto the head, and the Janaker sheet sorted out and clipped onto the clue. Next was hoisting the suck until it reached the top. The suck was pulled upwards using the pre installed line, and eventually the Janaker was gently unfolded behind the mainsail. A slight course change were made until the wind catches the sail.
and before I knew it, we were sailing perfectly on a broad reach into the North Sea. I was stunned to see what a difference this kind of sail made to the boat. Speed, balance, and not to mention great joy and happiness was instantly added to my addiction of ocean sailing. So with all the new installments, I've never felt more ready to create new adventures of shore. So what do you think? A nice kind of sailing, huh? Downwind with the new Janneker. Fantastic. All right, I think that's it. Uh, thank you, Rolly Tasker, and thank you, Grand Sail, and thank you, Selden, for making this happen. And I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of fun with it and make a lot of good uh, videos in the future. Can't wait. So I'll see you later. Okay, bye.